I'll be honest, I'm wearing a Bobby shirt because it's warm and colorful. I want to do this whole review in Seth MacFarlane voices. Yeah. It's my one opportunity to do those impressions. I'd like to apologize. What's up, Freak fans? Welcome back to the channel. I was going to give Ted a try. I said, I'll give it one episode, see what happens. And then I watched two and three. And by the time the day was over, we got to seven. I know I'm late on this review, but I want to talk about this show. Let's do it. How bad is school going to suck? You're not going to like it. How bad? Well, it's like getting your nuts smashed together so hard they become just one nut. Holy shit. It's 1993, and Ted the Bear's moment of fame has passed. He's living back home with his best friend, John Bennett, and his family. While Ted may be a lousy influence on John, he's a loyal pal who will go out on a limb for friendship. It's created by Seth MacFarlane. The series is obviously rated TV mature. There's a lot of bad stuff in here. I promise I'm done. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Got Max Burkholder playing a young John Bennett in this show and being aware and enjoying the first two movies. You gotta kind of capture the essence of Mark Wahlberg, but you don't want to do a full impression. This kid, this dude, I, I love this performance. And not only is it just such fantastic chemistry with the character of Death, which is what you got from the two movies, but it's comedic timing, it's being on top of it, it's those moments where you can tell he's kind of wanting to smirk because of the dialogue that he's being given, but he just pushes through it. That's something you don't get with animation. You get these crazy lines, the back and forth, the chemistry that he's doing with an animated character, but you also get that little wiggle in the corner of your mouth like, ah, he, he wants to laugh but he can't. But he does such a great job with his lines, line delivery, and the chemistry, the bromance, the brotherly relationship between the two main characters and some of these jokes, man. This is a show, a, a comedy show, where the script shines through everything else. I like a lot about Ted, but the best part is the writing. It is on point, on top of things. It's offensive, like Family Guy is. Well, like the classic Family Guy used to be. I, I don't think Seth MacFarlane's written on Family Guy in a while, and he's the guy behind this show. You can tell just from the opening shot and the music cues, the intro, the occasional flashback, it feels like you're watching a live-action Family Guy, to be honest with you. It's, it's crazy. I wasn't expecting to feel that way, and if you would have told me before I started the show, Austin, it's, it's just a live-action Family Guy, I would have said, uh, that doesn't sound good. But it is that, in the best way, this sweater's starting to itch a little bit. Itchy, why am I so itchy? But I liked it. I liked the fact the music's similar, the dialogue is uh, extremely similar. Those, those bits, man, some of these jokes, not everyone is laugh out loud, gut busting funny. There's uh, occasionally a bit or two that goes on a little bit too long, or, uh, you know, there are points in the show where some episodes just aren't as funny as other episodes, but you're at least invested in the story because you've grown to love these characters from the movies. But now you're growing to love these other characters, the mom, the dad, the cousin, and all the other people that show up, a lot of them actors from Family Guy, that you can tell in their voices. Alana Ubach, Batch, Bach, Georgia Wiggum, uh, Scott Grimes as Maddie, and just their dynamic. I mean, there's always something going on with, with mom and dad, and we're trying to explore their relationship in this show. It's interesting, uh, and it's something that Blair occasionally calls out. She's a very distinct character in the show because her philosophies are so different than the family that we're spending time with, but it makes for a fascinating dynamic, a fun dynamic, one that occasionally starts to get into kind of their beliefs and their belief systems, and some people are going to see that and say, ah, and I, I do feel as if there were a couple of things in this show that didn't really feel like 90s dialogue or 90s character actions. It felt more like what characters would say or do in the 2010s and the 2020s. So in that way, not all of it feels timely, if that makes sense. And not that it ruined the show for me, but I'm like, I just don't feel like this is a conversation that people would have in the 90s. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I wasn't there. I was. I was young. But for me, coming back to Ted and Johnny, every time they would talk about anything that was random or off topic or who would you rather eat, Tom Hanks or Diane Keaton, I... <laughs> Some of these plot lines, faking being a bully's dad because you want to mess with him, but then you grow a bond and a connection to him, and it, it reminds me of that SpongeBob episode where SpongeBob and Patrick are, are mother and father, and they're, they're raising the... That, that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, they're doing the Ted thing. They're talking about drugs and sex and, and all those things that you expect to hear and see in Ted, and, and a lot of the jokes... Some people will see that and say, well, that's going overboard. But the thing about Seth MacFarlane is he doesn't just focus or hone in on one thing. If he's going to make fun of someone or a group of people or two different groups of people or a religion or this or that, he's going to go all in on everybody and everything. Nobody's off limits, even Seth MacFarlane himself. And that's what I love 
about him, right? He pushes boundaries. He doesn't go completely overboard, uh, which I appreciate. But Ted is one of those shows where I'm watching it. I'm, I'm locked in on the story enough, right? But it's so dang funny. This is one of the, and I love classic family guy. I really like American Dad right now, but I love where it takes its characters seriously, still delivers on the humor, but also has a really well-written script, one that you can tell they spent time on. And even though these subplots are so stupid, like at one point, there's a guy in the store, he's trying to help him buy something. They have a full conversation. It starts to get a little weird. You're feeling uncomfortable. And then the joke ends with him running out of the store and you're realizing he's not an actual employee. I'm not trying to spoil things here, but that's really funny. Well, I didn't make it sound funny, but the way it's executed is hilarious. And it's those bits, those gags, those ongoing things. And the longer this show went, the more I'm like, I'm sad. It's, it's why is it only seven episodes? It needs to be more episodes. But episode seven ended, and I'm sitting here like, I, this, I want more of this. I like it a lot. And I just love the fact that you can tell Seth MacFarlane got free reign on this series, and all of the people that he had involved in the writer's room, and, uh, you know, making it feel like a solid sitcom. Can we talk really quickly about the CGI? Ted, for the most part, there's, there's another thing where you get some CGI in there. It's... I don't want to say seamless. I guess there are points where it's not as good as it is here as it is here, but this is some of the best looking CGI in a comedy series, right? We haven't seen many examples of that, but in a comedy series on Peacock, when you got all these Marvel shows and big blockbuster $200 million shows, and then here you have Ted, and I know they didn't spend that much money on this show, but Ted looks amazing. And the job that the actors are doing, communicating with Ted, riffing off of Ted, and letting Ted go on his crazy monologues, it's so good. And by the time we get to episode seven, where it's, you know, it's still funny, right? But we're really kind of focused in on Johnny getting into his first relationship and sparking a little bit of a romance. And, and you care. You're invested. It's like, I've grown. I mean, I knew who this character was with the movies, obviously, but I've grown to learn more about this character while he was young. And Dad got it. Ted got me. That's what I'm talking about! Um, we want season two. We want a season two. That's just plain and simple. That's where I'm at right now. I want to see more of the show, of these characters, and who knows? Do another movie down the line, that's fine. I want a season two of Ted. I feel like I want to drive to Boston right now. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Maybe one or two examples of characters overacting. I know I've seen some complaints online where, you know, the mom, she's a little overwhelming with the accent and how much she leans into it, but I, you know, I still found her really funny and her character arc and the dad's character arc and, and ev everybody had an arc, which I appreciate. So, you know, it's a show that focuses on the humor. Yes. That focuses on the visuals. Absolutely. But there's a lot in there that you can actually kind of latch onto. And this one, it got me. I can't believe it got me. Before I give you my score, I understand some people won't take me seriously in this, but it's so comfortable. Also, if you want to drop a like on this video, that would be awesome. Ted is not only hilarious, but it manages to build up likable characters, interesting dynamics, and the occasional touching moment that isn't often felt in a comedy. This is Seth MacFarlane at his absolute best. I loved it. It's hilarious. I can't wait for people to watch this. Oh my God. More reviews to come this week. We're going to be talking Oscars. We're going to be getting prepared for all of the madness that's coming and a couple of movies to review as well. But please go watch Ted on Peacock. If you downloaded it and got a subscription for that playoff game, keep it. Watch Ted. Thanks for watching. See you soon.